Hi friends, today we're going to deal with the subject of mantis sticky hands. Um, we're going to do single hand, we're going to talk about combat distancing, timing, hooking, sealing, and two hand sticky hands. Now, let me say, first of all, this is not, you would not connect and stand there in a fight. Of course, that's just asinine. We understand that. This is something that has to happen within seconds. You connect with the man's wrist or elbow or body. You sense the intent and you go from there. So this has to happen in less than a second. But you can't get there without taking it slow and easy. And that's what I'm demonstrating tonight. This is how we do it at beginner level. Now, mantis combat distance, I should have my foot inside of his feet. You see people in martial arts want to fight from a distance because they're afraid to get up close and personal with their opponent. But in mantis, the whole idea is I want to get in on him because what's a mantis do? It reaches out, it grabs its opponent, and it draws it in and then starts eating it. Well, in Mantis, we don't fight from a distance. We want to fight at intimate level. So, the first way to learn this is to always practice with your lead foot between his feet. Because that's where you're going to move in. Of course, we have the old uh, saying in uh, tai Chi Mei Wa, praying mantis, that the hands are always on the center. The elbows are connected to the ribs. The shoulders are dropped, and you pounce like a cat. So, this would happen after we've pounced in. So, we assume the pounce for this drill. So, I have my foot in beside, between his feet, and I should have my foot connected to. This is why we employ that seven star stance, is to hook the person's lead foot. Now we're not going to do that in the drill. We're going to connect our lead hands. We don't need the back hand for now. And we spin around the person's arm. Like I said, this is beginner level, very basic. If this becomes a wrestling contest of arms, you've already lost and you're not going to learn anything. You should be very soft. And what you're looking for when you roll around his hand is the empty spaces. Like right here should be an empty space that I can fly up into his throat or his eyes or punch, whatever I want to do. So as you rotate, you want to find the empty spaces. Now this time, John is going to deflect when I attack. Okay, now in Mantis, anything that moves to the inside is sealing. So he's going to deflect me out and then down. That's sealing. Uh, the Chinese word means to envelop. It's like putting your opponent's attacking arm or leg in a box and holding on to it so that he can no longer use it. That's what sealing is. Now, if we're here and I strike here, then John's going to hook. Okay? That's how Mantis generally handles an attack coming at it, is either with sealing or hooking. Now, when I say hook, when I hook John's hand, I'm not grabbing. That's not necessary. The soft principle of Mantis is to redirect a straight attack and then bounce off. Another thing is leaking. If I feel John moving into me, I'll take the power of the hand and I will leak. I will leak around his arm to attack. Another important principle in Mantis, leaking. And you learn these through this simple drill.
Now you'll notice I don't lift my elbows. If you're lifting your elbows, you're failing. Because what are the elbows supposed to do? They're supposed to be attached to the rib cage. I'm not taking way out or way out here. I can do it within the confines of my shoulder box and my hip box. So we're moving in a circle. Now if John attacks me in some way, again, I'm going to seal. I'm going to redirect it. And then I'm going to play off of that. But in this drill, we're just using the one hand. And we're circling. And it doesn't matter if you're circling in. That gives me an opportunity to practice my sealing. If I'm circling out, that gives me an opportunity to practice my hooking. Now we're going to switch feet. So we do this with both feet, both sides, because in Mantis there's no left hand or right hand. Both sides should equally be trained. Again, I'm protecting my center line. I'm keeping my elbow in. I'm not moving it all around here. I'm just rotating with my elbow pretty much held in one spot. And if he attacks now, I hook and bounce off or employ the other hand. If he attacks here, I seal. Bring it down and put it away where it's of no use again. Now that's single hand. We also do double hand. In this case, we're going to stand with our feet equal spaced and we rotate again. And you should practice this in both directions so that both hands get equal training. Now, this is where you can practice things like tying up the opponent's arms. I call this threading. Over one arm, under the other arm, and press the hands towards him to open him up to attack. Now, like I said, you can't think of this as, oh, well, you know, nobody's going to stand there and let you do it. Well, of course they're not. But if we're fighting, all I have to do is touch him, and then I'm going to sense what's going to happen. And this is especially important in grappling. And wrestlers know exactly what I'm talking about, because this is how judoka and wrestlers fight. They want to feel what's happening. They're getting feedback from their opponent so they can use that feedback against them. In our case, I pounce like a cat, and then I feel what's going to happen. Does he go weak? If he goes weak, I go in and around and attack. If he comes strong back at me, I can again move around, let him come into me, and strike while he's coming. So I'm getting feedback with this technique. And like I said at beginning level, we use this type of a drill. And then when I feel an opening, I'll attack towards it. And he seals me off. Now, John is a high level in Wing Chun. So he naturally tries to use his Wing Chun blocking techniques, which also work. But if he were to attack me, I'm going to seal. I'm not just going to pass him to the side. Though, you see that in Bung Boo. Is that pass and strike? So we do that too. But typically in Taiji Mei Wall, we seal. We bring it down so that we open the whole body. If I bring it down, I can bounce right back up and strike him. If this hand comes in at me, I'm going to hook. And again, I don't. a hook is not a grab. It can be, but there's no need to. Because I would do this and then bounce right off of it. Okay? Okay. I hope you got something out of this.